this Refcom 2021 presentation. I am Gopal Akilla, a subject matter expert for the solvent deasphalting technology and working as director in Wood Group. Wood offers licenses for EOP first wheeler SDA technology. Today I would talk about some of the key points in the design of the SDA process, which is solvent selection criteria for the targeted products. Uh, what is solvent deasphalting? It is predominantly used as a bottom of barrel upgrading solution, elegant, purely a physical separation phenomenon, no chemical reactions, no catalyst, or no hydrogen used. It's a simple solvent is mixed with VR feed. Lighter and heavier phases separate. Solvent is recovered and reused. Now, separation, is, separation of products is achieved by density difference between lighter and heavier phases. It also depends on solvent selection and composition and the separator conditions. Now, product yields and qualities dictated by feed contaminants and, its, and their distribution. Now, solvent deasphalting unit overview. Uh, three products can be separated from the residue by mixing a paraffinic solvent in six to eight volumes ratio. The impurities in the products decrease uh, in the DAO while they, while they increase in the asphalt product. The viscosity is lower in the DAO product, whereas uh, pitch is a highly viscous product. Bulk of the solvent is separated from the DO product using supercritical conditions, while residual solvent in the product streams is evaporated, condensed, and recovered under low pressure or high te temperature. Uh, in, the, in the past, subcritical uh, conditions were used in the solvent recovery with the multiple effective operation system, which is a very energy intensive process. Now, what is uh, vacuum resi residue before and after solvent addition? Vacuum residue is a colloidal system, continuous oil phase, asphalt is held in suspension by aromatic resins. Mesilis in equilibrium with the continuous oil phase. Once the solvent is added, the molecular bonds are dissolved uh, when, uh, as the paraffinic solvent is added at a high volume. Now, paraffinic hydrocarbon and some aromatics are recovered in the DO, while naphthenic and asphaltene material is separated in the asphalt pitch product. Solvent selection product qualities. There is a relationship between SDA feed contaminants, solvent, and the resulting qualities. How to select solvent and determine product qualities? Let me explain. The key variables are feedstock properties, disposition of the products, type of solvent used, solvent to all ratio, extractor and DO separator temperatures. So first let us look at uh, where this uh, deasphalted is already used and the pitch product. DO product is used as a loop based stock, FCC, RFCC, hydroprocessing, VG hydrocracking, residue hydrocracking. Pitch product is used as a fuel oil, bitumen, conventional combustion, fluid, fluid bed combustion, wish breaking, gasification, and coking. So these are the typical product qualities uh, when the DU is sent to these units. You can see in the table, 
this uh, for loops product CCR is a constraint and also metals. Sometimes they specify viscosity uh, and sometimes they mention about sulfur and so on and so forth, but these are the two main ones. For RFCC, CCR can be a six or above, metals need to be low. For hydrocracker, less than four weight percent. For ablated bed hydrocracker, the main spec is a C7 insoluble content. For the pitch product, the we, I, I typically listed out as a softening point as a constraint. Uh, but as you see in, from the pitch product from SDS serves as a raw material for the above list of products. Uh, the pitch product requires other additives, binders, mixing product to conform to the full list quality, quality specification of each disposition. Discussion on this is outside the scope of SDA technology. Now, how do we estimate? UOP Forster Wheeler has extensive experience on in in-house data to estimate yields and product properties for most applications. When the client sends out different range, ranges or different feed cases, we typically bracket them into two cases, which is a high impurity and low impurity cases, or high viscous and low viscous feeds. We generally recommend new pilot plant study when we see unusual feeds, high DO lift applications, and uh, asphalt quality guarantees are required. And sometimes we want to determine the, the correct solvent and the solvent to all ratio. The, pic the picture below shows the, uh, the products when, when the residue is separated. You can see slop wax, light DAO, heavy DAO, and the end point. Now, how the solvent circulates in a modern uh, supercritical solvent recovery uh, ST unit. Feed and uh, solvent is mixed. Solvent is added in, in 8 is to 1 uh, solvent to wall ratio. It enters the extractor. The DO and the solvent uh, flows above the extractor and nearly seven volumes are recovered in the DO separator and then recirculated back to the extractor after heat recovery, cooling, and then uh, sending it to, uh, sending back to the feed. Nearly one volume is separated from the bottom of the both the extractor and the DO separator which are heated, evaporated, condensed, and then sent back to the uh, extractor, extractor gate. This is how the solvent circulation happens. Now, what is the solvent to all ratio week and uh, how it is chosen? For propane or lube oil applications, we use 8 is to 1. For a three product SDA unit, we used again 8 is to 1 for, to separate an extra product as well as uh, 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 target the required yield and the qualities. If D were used in fuels such as FCC, hydrocracker, and so on and so forth, we use a 6 is to 1 solvent to ratio. The minimum solvent to all ratio we recommend is 6 is to 1. Uh, to ensure consistency in the product yields and qualities in spite of small changes in the feed. I will explain the rationale more clearly in the following slides. Solvent selectivity versus DO product qualities. So this is a typical chart we see in the literature. Uh, a composite plot on a linear graph the y-axis is the feed contaminant percentages, which include nitrogen, sulfur, CCR, nickel, and vanadium. Sulfur and nitrogen show somewhat proportional relationship. Uh, so as you are increasing the, the DO lift, you can see 
the you you see higher higher percentages of sulfur and, and nickel uh, whereas ccr nickel and vanadium they they show a more of inflection so even though you at a higher lift the metals and ccr pickup is is uh, smaller in terms of percentages of the feed now what about uh, solvent selectivity against the density and viscosity of the product this is more or less a, prof a linear uh, relation relationship uh, is on the right hand side i plotted uh, we plotted the graphs for various residues the slopes are slightly varying from one another so the intercept and the slope changes from for each of the residue if you plot the viscosity uh, on a linear graph it is a curve you can see for various residues how these curves change uh, if you plot the viscosity index against the yield it is more or less like a straight line with the slope and the intercept and now what about the contaminants uh, for sulfur it is a, they are proportional as I explained earlier for uh, for nitrogen it's somewhat semi logarithmic uh, these are the you see on the right hand side these are the various residues plotted uh, for nickel similar uh, similar behavior for vanadium is is a different if if the feed has uh, low vanadium content it's uh, more of a, a straight line however at a high vanadium content levels it becomes a semi uh, there's an inflection point so this is the reason why uh, with uh, residues with high vanadium content we sometimes want to do a pilot plant study because there's a dramatic pickup once the one certain uh, percentage of do lift is uh, desired ccr also behaves the same way as vanadium there's an inflection point so we always pay extra attention to high ccr residues when uh, when the do target yield is high what about the other uh, criteria solvent to wall ratio i explained earlier about 6 is to 1 and 8 is to 1 ratio used what if we use a different uh, solvent to wall ratios and what about the extractor temperature uh, these will be discussed here as you can see in the graph at a uh, at about uh, say 60% lift the do metal content is low at 80 to 1 while compared to 60 to 1 and it is much higher in 3 is to 1 solvent to wall ratio so this can be looked at in the other way if i'm uh, if the metal content is acceptable at 60 to 1 then uh, I could use the 80 to 1 solvent ratio and get the extra DAO lift. So it, it's it's a kind of trade-off we can uh, we can play with high solvent to ratio versus low solvent to wall ratios. Uh, but we typically limit uh, any variation between six and eight instead of three is to one because three is to one becomes very sensitive to the uh, quality changes in the feed. Or contaminant changes in the feed. Uh, now, why the reason to show this graph again is that whatever solvent to wall ratio used, the maximum solvent uh, is recovered in the high pressure section. Uh, the heat is recovered and then and then reused. The the energy requirement is minimal, uh, which is about one volume, uh, 
one volume of the solvent need to be evaporated, condensed, and recovered. So it doesn't matter what solvent to already show you use. Bulk of the solvent is recovered. Heat is its heat is recovered and reused, whereas the only only one volume uh, which needs to be evaporated, condensed, and and then reused. Now extractor temperature. Uh, the extractor temperature varies from solvent to solvent. For propane, it is the lowest temperature. For pentane, it's the highest. However, if you increase the extractor temperature, uh, it uh, the DO yield uh, will be lowered. However, the quality improves. Keep in mind that these extractor temperatures always are lower than the critical temperature of, this, of that solvent. Now, D was separated temperature. This is more of an economic and then uh, uh, design limitations, uh, which we investigate in the recovery exchanger that comes into this uh, in, before uh, coming to the D was separator. The recovery exchanger that is shown here, where the DO separator overheads are essentially used to preheat the DO separator feed. That's a very critical exchanger. So we use a uh, we use a, the additional uh, criteria to to essentially ensure the surface area that is required uh, will uh, will provide the necessary lower the energy cost in this unit. Typical solvent selection for high selectivity and maximum yield. Now, now, I have shown for the various product disposition, what is the typical solvent selection that is used? For loops, it is propane, FCCs and hydrocrackers. It's uh, anywhere from isobutane to butane or a blend of them. For ablated bed hydrocrackers, it is isopentane or pentane. Now, resin is a flexible product where we can uh, target to be slightly heavier than DO or slightly less viscous than the pitch product. Now, this is again the typical solvent selection for the various uh, uh, pitch product dispositions. For road asphalts is propane. For solid film furnaces is pentane, isopentane, pentane. Now, this is the summary. This table is uh, very useful for any STA process planner. So based on the product dispositions, uh, these are the solvents that are used. So one can add mix it up or vice versa. Say for example, while making uh, lube oil products, they cannot expect to make uh, solid fuels. Uh, it won't work. Similarly, the other way, when somebody is targeting a very high lift uh, for ablated bed hydrocrackers and then expect uh, road asphalt to be produced. So those things do not add, add up well. So these, this is the a guideline a, when for uh, the targeted DO yields and the qualities versus the solvent selection. The above tables not only summarizes the quality and disposition of the SDA products, but also explain the relationship correspondence with the selected solvent. Summary. Customers shall provide input to the SDA technology licensor with residue feed, source, flow, characteristics, and contaminant qualities. The targeted DO qualities where the downstream unit processes 3O. These, this information is in, in turn is used by the licensor to determine the solvent selection, solvent to all ratio, and the SDA product qualities. Uh, now, the DO yield is directly dependent on insoluble content in the field, which is the as, asphaltines, 
are six, seven insolubles in the field. The DEVA qualities are mainly dependent on feed contaminant levels and solvent selection. I hope this presentation explains the intricacies in the SDA technology for its selectivity and solvent selection criteria for the targeted products. Now I shall open the floor for question and answers. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh,